Oh, it's just Jorad. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another theory video for Little Nightmares, and today I have an interesting video for you. I've been pondering on this one since the release of the second comic, and by golly, I have got what I need to make this video public today. The reason I'm doing this video is because I always read the comics a couple of times over, and as I notice on my first read, I let my brain take what it will get from it, and then in a couple of days after, I'll reread and start to look at the little things that I didn't notice beforehand. And even still, I'll go for a third and fourth visit. So after enough pondering on each visit, I've got enough evidence now and an idea that I'm going to break down the story and the backstory of the second comic. But as I was breaking down this comic, it's actually led me to a bigger theory which I will explain today. It's safe to say I've got more theories. <laughs> okay, no, sorry. So, apart from that embarrassment, I want to talk about the kids living in the moor and in the shadows, each having individual experiences, the first child you hear in the first comic is the one that talks about the North Wind. And the North Wind is some type of entity. Now, I only say that because you'll see the similarities later on in the video. So I start with the second comic because I thought the second comic was a lot more puzzling. The first comic was more of a base comic that we could all establish connections, blah, 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 blah. But the second one was really mind boggling and opened the door to a had a lot of questions. So let me quickly break down the first character that I want to talk about from the second comic, and that is The Hanging Man. I think I did a video prior to this explaining that it was possibly Dr. No, and I'm still pondering the idea. But when we look at the physical evidence and picture evidence, we understand that it actually does look a lot like the Hanging Man. There should be a couple of images on your screen right now, and these images are the ones taken from the moor. Now, what I wanted to question was, could the Hanging Man potentially be working for the moor beyond the grave or wherever he may be? Poor guy can't even get out of his work contract, even in death. What strikes me is the consistency of the character. Now, in the comic, we notice that he doesn't actually have a head. And in the pictures on the moor, he doesn't have a head, which we can find from the data mine. Now, I understand that devs, artists, programmers alike like to save a bit of time when they don't need certain resources, but the consistency to this leads me to believe it is planned. It doesn't matter where this character is shown, he always seems to represent the same features. And this is where I lead into the second comic. Now, in the comic, we see four children enter a house that is crazily covered in mirrors. And this is where we see the hanging. And this is where the crazy theory begins. So, from what we could tell in the comics and the story is you can see the mirrors physically change appearances. My first initial thought as an and a theory to that is you know from my previous video that they could have been the chefs, the janitor, etc, etc. But... I believe I am wrong. When I reread the comic, I realized that I misplaced a character, as many other theorists have too. The person telling the story on the mirrors is not the girl who is afraid to look into the mirror. If you look at one of the narratives, it says, and I quote, mirrors always talk too much, just like her friends. So from this, I can assume it's a story from another perspective. And how I got to this conclusion? Well, this is where the fun begins. So, four children enter the house. When they look into the mirrors, they change. But the only one that doesn't is the girl, and that's because she's too scared. Now, the other kids, they change to the tall child, the strong child, and the twins. And this is because they've looked into the mirror. This is why they get their names. So, if we step back for a second, in total now, we have five children currently in that room. But once this happens, the mirror comes to life with what I can only be assuming is the hanging man and the strong child gets sucked into the mirrors thus we don't see him for the rest of the comic and then after this one of the twins gets sucked in which then will leave us with three children the tall half a twin and the girl out of fear and desperation the girl that can't look at the mirrors comes up with some sort of plan to destroy the monster in the mirror or just destroy them in general and get their friends back and thus they work on this plan to destroy the mirrors when they destroyed the mirror you could see bits and pieces all over the floor the shattered bits and you could see all the individual characters now when the tall guy or child asks the girl or the other member if it worked the tall child covers something 
in the meantime and says, oh no. As this happens, the girl that was too scared to look in the mirror looks at the mirror and in the mirror is a figure of the tall gentleman that we saw earlier and obviously the one that's covering up the guy. And at this point, the girl says we can go get some help. And as they're on their way out, I will add that there's only two individuals leaving. And the two individuals are half of the twin and the girl. On their way out, they also add an extra bit of dialogue that says, we'll help you too, or somewhere along the lines of that. Who could that be implying to, or something? It's someone they're implying that to, and it's who is under the cover. So we know on the way out, they have left two children behind. The tall child in the mirror, and also the strong child. Now, the strong child was sucked up in the mirror that they broke. And this leads me on to my theory. I think when they broke the mirror, they also released the strong child. And the strong child was deformed in such a way that they've actually covered him up. So my conclusion is the child that is actually telling the story is the deformed, hunched, and odd-shaped strong child that was first sucked into the mirror. Let me briefly explain how this could be possible. While we've all pondered on why the mirrors are broken in the moor, this kind of sheds some light on it, and this could link the reason to why they're broken actually on the moor itself, where all the children could possibly be. So from our understanding, we know that when someone enters the mirror, they are within the mirror. And we know this because the tall child was left in the mirror because the mirror was intact. But the mirror that was broken released the strong child. So out of fear for their own safety and their children's safety, they break the mirrors in the moor in fear of becoming deformed or it's a double-edged sword. They purposely put these children into the mirrors, break them, then retrieve them. So to conclude, the mirrors play a bigger part than we think. And I think that this is why we see a lot of deformed children on the moor and in the pictures. I believe that the mirror has caused them to do this, and I believe the one that is actually telling the story, the child, is the strong child. But guys and gals, let me know what you think. I believe we could have a little chat about this one. I, I would love to know if it's legit. I would love to know what you guys think about it. I believe if it is possibly true, it's opened up a whole new branch of story to Little Nightmares. But anyway, if you like the video, please hit like. If you think you want to follow me for some more Little Nightmares theories, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!